Hey there guys, Dragon Master here, and I want to welcome you to Star Wars in Earth, Unity. So this is uh, my new uh, Le Legend series, I guess continuation series of, well, the last uh, Legend series that only ended, I guess Star Wars in Earth Legends, so yeah. So my, everyone, well, I guess like the few comments we got was saying Legends, so that's what I'm going with. So it's going to be, uh, I guess, until this series is done before we move on to Mandalorian Season 2 for Earth. But yeah, for this video, you're probably going to notice, like, when I start, start, like, the whole, like, monologue and everything for the series, that there is, I'm finally starting to do, like, um, music and audio in the background. So, yeah, to make it a bit more interesting. So, yeah, without further ado... Let's get straight into the video. We start off with Mara, Dr Mara Jade, who is looking at her nephew Jason in sadness and shock. She wonders why and even asks him and screams at him, why Jason, why did you betray us and join the Sith? Jason looks at her and then looks at the Terrans before sighing and explaining, my dear Aunt Jade, I had no choice. The galaxy has entered a new period which it needs to change for the good of all. And especially it involves you Terrans. You Terrans have changed everything about the galaxy. Many tactics have changed, many technologies are now being advanced. The galaxy is all but changed now than it should have been. You broke the cycle which the galaxy has been suffering for for a long time, with no new innovations, no change, but your presence changed all that. The reasons why I'm doing this is for the good of the galaxy, as I realize that the galaxy needs to be under new leadership. The Yuzhan Vong War taught us that politicians were almost more or less useless. If the Terrans had not intervened in war in the Senate earlier, there could have been more deaths than there already was. And if the Senate had believed them in the first place, then more lives would have been saved and evacuated Coruscant. But the New Republic were fools. For why I am doing this is, well I guess another reason why I've joined the Sith is for the only reason is that they have the power I need. But I am no fool. I know that Dalvin deep into the dark side has consequences. That is why I take lessons from Darth Revan, as he is a being of balance. And I will use both the light and dark side to rebuild the Jedi and Sith into something much better. And I will use the Empire to do it. What's left of the old Empire and the Corellian government. And now I extend this offer to you Terrans, that you could join me, and I only ask that you just stand aside, and you do not have to fight, just join me and stand aside. The Terran agents look at Jason for a minute, and then they look back at him and explain, no, they are loyal to their government, and they are loyal to Earth and all of her colonies. They would never betray her. Jason looks at them, closes his eyes and sighs, and explains that he has no choice. He gets his lightsaber ready as Mara prepares and looks at her nephew in sadness. He looks back at her and says, Oh, and one more thing. My name is not Jason. It is Darth Cedis. I can't really pronounce it. And then a massive battle begins as the Terrans fight Darth Cedis and his master. Of course, Corellian guards arrive to support them as the Terran marines and special forces are pinned down. A battle takes place. The agent takes out a viral blade and goes to attack. The virus fights his, well, I guess Jason's master, Luminaeus. And Mara and Jason have a duel. The fight goes on for a few minutes before Jason is able to overpower Mara. While... The special Terran agent is able to get Luminaris in the shoulder, but he he loses a he gets a scar across his eye for his troubles. 
He of course is then pushed to the ground, and both Mara and him are both surrounded. Many of the Terran special forces have been killed, as the Corellian forces were overwhelming them. With only a few troops left, they're immediately brought to the center of a circle. Jason looks at his aunt, but then he hears Luminaeus's cackle as she looks at her and explains that how she can't wait for Luke to find out that his wife is dead. And then when the whole family hears about Jason's betrayal, it will be truly delicious, in her opinion. Oh, how the irony, it is a repeat of Anakin. The agent looks at her and then says that Bunny, coming from a sort of like rejected version of Darth Vader, as she is mostly cybernetics and has grown over the age of years and is still not as powerful. This gets a look from her and she immediately orders Jason to kill both Mara and the agent and the survivors. Jason nods his head and looks at Mara. He looks straight into her eye. But a second later, as, she clo as Mara closes her eyes, she hears a lightsaber wound stab, and she looks over to see that Jason has stabbed Lumineus. And she looks at him in shock and asks, why? And he explains that I know what you are, and that you are an agent of chaos, and I am trying to bring order to this galaxy. And in a way, I am Vader. But I will not be as foolish as him, as he is with his master, so I am getting rid of someone who could threaten me in the future. As she closes her eyes and dies, she mouths, Ah, so this is how I go down, and closes her eyes. Jason then looks at them and explains that, I will let you live, but you will return back to the Terrans and call off the fleet. You will be allowed to to leave and live if you call off the fleet that is currently engaged in my forces up in space. He then, the agent then asks if he gives a communicator so he can contact them. He agrees and gives it to him. He, the Terran agent contacts the Admiral up there and they have a talk for a few minutes. Admiral P Pikes agrees to this and they send the shuttle to retrieve them. He knows that they need to get whatever information they got, as the agent had only been vague. Mara looks at her nephew and he looks back at her and explains that, tell Uncle Luke that he should stand out of my way and everything will be alright. And I will let him and his new Jedi Order join me in what I am doing. She asks if this is what he truly wants. And he looks at her and explains yes. She nods turns her head, and wipes away some small tears, and then walks off. As Jason watches the shuttle leave, he then leaves, and eventually goes to a crowd of Corellians, people, and then is ready to deliver his speech. As the cameras turn on, this will be broadcast to the whole galaxy. He looks at the camera, and then... And that is where we're gonna leave it off. So, yeah, this was probably, a. Uh, this was uh, a lot of planning and everything is going down as you can see. The next episode is going to be just start off with Jason's speech to the galaxy and I guess the preparations and the beginning more or less of the war. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. I guess without further ado, goodbye.